everybody, it's Femme Trooper, and today we're going to be going over my entire Switch collection. So the last time I did one of these videos was actually only a year ago, but I've since kind of doubled the collection. So let's just go right into it and check it out in alphabetical order. First up, we have AI The Somnium Files. Great visual novel, great story, incredibly creepy, hilarious, some of the best characters I've ever seen in video games. Definitely check this out and definitely buy it. The next one is the sequel, AI The Somnium Files, Nirvana Initiative. Absolutely fabulous, great, a great follow-up. I think I like the first better still, but it is solid and a lot of fun and it's just, you know, you're smiling the whole time, it's great. It's great game. Next, I have Astral Chain, a really cool game, uh, action, game with JRPG elements, I guess. Um, I don't personally consider it to be a JRPG, but I know a lot of people do. I don't know, whatever. Uh, it's an action game to me. Really cool, but not my favorite. I, I wanted more from it. I didn't really connect with it the way I thought I would, but it is a really, really cool game. Next, we have Bee Simulator, a game that I still haven't played because when I got it, I was having Joy-Con drift issues. That's since been solved, so I need to actually check this out because I don't think it's that long, and it does look really, really silly and interesting, so I got I just gotta check it out. I gotta just finally give it a go. <laughs> Next, I have a game that I really want to play with some friends soon, I'm hoping. I'm hoping we can find a time, maybe in the new year. I think in the new year we can do this. And that is Blue Reflection Second Light. I've played the first one. I thought it was it was actually really good. Uh, not the best game, but it was good enough that I wanted the sequel. So really looking forward to this. It, it definitely... Um, there's something really comforting about this series, and I don't know why. It's just a weird... It's a weird one. Next we have Bug Fables. This is a limited run copy I got, and it is really, really cool. It's not the best JRPG out there. There's definitely some issues, but it's really, really fun and plays like Paper Mario and looks like Paper Mario and some of the cities and towns. It's so cool. So really, really neat. If you're looking for something a little different, check this out. Next we have a, uh, a visual novel that I haven't gotten to yet. It's an Atome game. I usually space my visual novels out heavily because I get, I find it just gets too overwhelming. Like I don't want to play back to back visual novels, not really my thing, but it's Cafe Enchanté and uh, it's an Otome game, but it looks really uh, interesting. So I'm excited to, you know, finally check it out. Maybe I'll check it out next year. I don't know. We'll see when I actually get to it. But uh, for now, I do have this and I haven't played it yet. Next, we've got Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Really cool game. I had to, you know, we had to get it again, even though we already have it for the Wii U. It's really solid. This is a great, fun puzzle game that is uh, not not too frustrating. You know what I mean? Like some puzzle games are like, ugh, but this is actually like really solid, super fun. So definitely check this out. Next, we have Clubhouse Games, 51 Worldwide Classics. Uh, this is really fun. Definitely get this if you have someone who will play these games with you because it's a great like LAN, like co-op game that you don't need to play with someone online. You can actually just play it on the table. So really cool if you're looking to just play like checkers with somebody or, or like air hockey, that kind of stuff. That's what this is. Great. The next game is a game I got accidentally and I shouldn't have because it is a sequel and I thought for some reason it had the first and second one on it. So it does not. So I will eventually have to get the first one before I can like open this up, but it's Color X Malice um, Unlimited, which is the sequel to it. It's like the fan disc. I don't know. I'm not like an Otome, you know, person full of knowledge, but yeah, so my bad. We've got Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, another, uh, no really good kart racer but it to me is not it's not at mario kart level so it's good but i i didn't i'm not like yes like i'm not like dying to play this i probably haven't played it for a couple years so yeah i need to check it out again here's a fun racer pick this up this year it's cruising blast i actually really like this game it's really fun if you're just looking for like you know i don't i don't really want to commit to something right now i want to just play some just play some racing stuff, then play this. It's really fun, really arcadey, really silly uh, in, in a goofy way. But if you like that, this is this is perfect for that. Next, we've got Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Uh, it has both. It has the first one and Hacker's Memory, which is the sequel. I really want to get to this soon. I'm hoping like next year, maybe, to give it a shot because I really enjoyed what I played of it on the PS4 and there's just no way I'm going back to that save, so I'm going to restart it on the Switch and hopefully get through it. Next, we have a game that I just beat in October, actually, which is Digimon Survive. It's a visual novel with 
uh, you know, strategy RPG elements in it, and it's definitely really good. I'm not in the I'm not in the camp of it sucks, but I'm not in the camp of its perfection either. I do not think this was that great. It overstayed its welcome a little bit. Uh, it definitely got really good towards the end. I didn't think the ending was as good of a payoff as I wanted it to be, but it is a really good game. So if you like visual novels, it's probably more for you. There, the, the SRPG elements are like 30% of the game or 20%, like it's very low. So it's mostly reading, but the game actually looks fantastic. I really liked the way it looked and the aesthetic and the, I don't want to say animations cause kind of, but it just visually, visually for a visual novel looked really good. Another Wii U game that we have repurchased, and that is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, because uh, why is there no new Donkey Kong game? Seriously, like, I'm very upset, actually, about that, but this is really good. Uh, we beat it on the Wii U, and whenever I feel like playing it on the Switch, I do have it now, because it's kind of, to me, just a must-own. We've got Dr. Kawashima's Brain Training, because, you know, I play that every night before I go to sleep. I have Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. This is one I want to get to maybe next year. It's like a Dragon Ball Z... Uh, or a Dragon Ball world, like JRPG, I guess. I don't know tons, but I do want to get to it. I'm kind of just chilling on the Dragon Ball stuff because I kind of went, like, I went, like, ham on the Dragon Ball Z train for a bit. So I'm kind of chilling a little bit with the Dragon Ball stuff because I, like, was nuts. I was, you know, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. I was playing uh, Dragon Ball Z Attack of the Sands on the DS, and then I was reading all the manga. So I'm kind of like, I need a Dragon Ball Z break, but when I feel like playing Dragon Ball... Again, uh, this is going to be what I play next. Uh, here's another Dragon Ball game. It's Dragon Ball Fighter Z. This is actually a really good fighting game. It's really fun. Again, one of those games where it's not like you're committing. You can just, you know, play a couple rounds with some friends and or just by yourself. It's really fun. So if you're wanting a game like that, this is perfect. It's like Street Fighter, or like with Dragon Ball Z characters, and it is actually quite fun. And the animations are really good. And of course, one of my favorite Switch games, you know that, um, is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Just a great game. I don't have anything bad to say about it. Made me love Dragon Ball Z. We've got Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3, the Erdrick Trilogy on the Switch. Again, some of my favorite games of all time are right here, and this is a great little package to own. Definitely own this. We've got Dragon Quest 11, my very favorite uh, JRPG on the Switch. This is top for me. This is the best JRPG on the Switch so far for me. Uh, it's just hands down the best. My first Dragon quest game I ever played and it made a serious impression and it's just phenomenal. This is like one of the best games ever made right here. <laughs> We've got Final Fantasy 9. This is a great uh, physical to own. Definitely check this out. One of the best Final Fantasies, I think for I don't know. I, 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 I never know if I like four more or if I like nine more, but Final Fantasy 9 either way is fantastic and definitely a must play game. We've also got Final Fantasy X and X-2, another great collection to have on the Switch. Uh, the only thing that kind of sucks about this collection is that X-2 is a digital copy. So you can get, like, I think the Asian version has, you know, a physical, like it has both on the cart versus this is just 10 on the cart and then you have a download code for X-2, which kind of sucks. But other than that, it is a really nice physical to own. We've got Fire Emblem Three Houses, another great Fire Emblem game. Not my fi favorite Fire Emblem though. Uh, the school element kind of just, I don't connect with that, so I'm not really into it. But other than that, this is a really good game and I'm really looking forward to the new one in January. We have the Grandia collection next and uh, obviously Grandia, fantastic game. I beat it uh, I think last year and it was fantastic. So I do need to get to number two. Uh, hopefully within the next couple years I'll check it out, but I'm really looking forward to that. We've got Just Dance 2020, which I bought during the pandemic, so that's enough said there. Next we have Kaze and the Wild Masks. Uh, I've been told this is very similar to Donkey Kong Country, and because I love Donkey Kong Country so much, I'm very excited to play this. I just picked this up in September, so I'm really excited. It's a recent edition, but uh, it's, you know, I've only heard really good things, so I can't wait to check it out because we so badly need a Donkey Kong game. Nintendo, you're only hope. The next game is Kirby and the Forgotten Land, which is one of the best games that has come out this year, hands down. So good, so good. I love platformers. I had never played a Kirby game before. This is my first foray into Kirby, and wow, I love Kirby now. This was so good. It felt like a, a game, like I knew my like kid self would have loved this game and I felt like a kid playing it. So, you know, kudos Nintendo because this was, this was really good. 
Next, we have a game that's on everybody's top 10 except mine, and that is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Just not my style of Zelda. That's the only thing. It's a fantastic game. It's just not my style of gameplay. It just doesn't do for me. I like top-down Zelda stuff more. So uh, this is great. Uh, first Switch game that I ever bought, and I obviously recognize that it's fantastic, but again, just, uh, just not my thing. Now here is my thing, and that is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Switch. This is so good. Visually, it is the most one of the most charming things I've ever seen. It is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I love it so much, and it plays great. This is fantastic. Not too long. I really, really enjoyed this. One of my favorites, uh, for sure. The next game is Luigi's Mansion 3, which to me is like god tier. It was so good. I had never played a Luigi's Mansion game before, and when people say like, oh, Nintendo, like, man, they know how to make games. This is one of the best examples I could ever think of for that. Uh, Nintendo is at its A game here. Like, they are indestructible. This is like one of their best, I think, personally. Like, for Nintendo making a game, this is... It's Luigi's Mansion 3. The next game is my favorite game on the Switch. What could that be? It's actually Mario Kart 8 <laughs> Deluxe. Uh, put so much time into this on the Wii U and on the Switch, and with all the new tracks coming out, all the DLC, this is by far the best Mario Kart ever, ever made. It's the best one. It is so fun. I love playing it. I don't ever get sick of it. It's so, so good. We've got Mario Party Superstars. Haven't really played this that often. It's more a game that we play online with friends, or sometimes I play just with my husband. Um, so I don't play it tons, but it is it is really fun, and I always love a new Mario Party game, always. We've got a amazing platformer here. It's New Super Lucky's Tale. This is basically uh, like what you wanted N64 games to look like and feel like back then, but the graphics in the system just wasn't capable. But now we are, and this is perfect. So if you like like Banjo-Kazooie and games like that, you will love this. It is so fun. It is a fantastic platformer. We have Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. I haven't played this yet. It was actually on my list of games to play this year. So we'll see because I'm we'll see if I get to it. Probably not. It might be an early next year game for me. I'm not sure, but it is a game I want to play. I've heard it's not as good as the first one, so we'll see what I personally think and what my opinion is on that, but it is like really um, high up on my list of, of games to play because the first one was just so so good and I don't have the first one for Switch because I don't rebuy JRPGs I still have it just for my PS3 and that is just fine with me it's great um, but uh, yeah you know Kuni 2 next we have Octopath Traveler <laughs> uh, a game that I always slam but there's so much going for it it is great aesthetically one of the most gorgeous games I've ever seen, like hands down. Uh, it, it's so, so, so beautiful. And the music is great and the gameplay, the battle system is great. I really, really enjoy it. It's just so grindy that I had to stop playing it. So I, I don't get rid of it because I only get rid of games that I legitimately hate and want out of my house. This is not one of those games. I don't hate it. I just, sometimes I think, oh, please, 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 please release a port or sorry, not a port, a patch that has like, like tones down the difficulty and then I would finish it, but uh, in my dreams, I guess. <laughs> the next game is a game I'm actually currently playing and that is Omori. It's uh, got a lot of uh, Earthbound elements. It's very much a love letter to Earthbound. Uh, not similar to Earthbound in terms of like the story, but it is similar in terms of your like little kids and the, even everything from the aesthetic, the way it looks, the way it plays. The battle system, uh, it's very quirky and strange, and the things you, like, you battle cassettes. Like, it's weird. It's weird. It's strange. Um, and I like this physical copy because it actually came with a, um, there's, like, stickers, but it also came with a manual. Wow. So, really cool. And uh, so I'm currently playing this about seven hours in. I'm hoping to beat it soon, hopefully this month. So fingers crossed, and you will always see my thoughts for everything, by the way, on Twitter and Instagram. I post whenever I beat a game. So you can go on my Instagram and you can see lots of end credits screenshots. <laughs> That's my thing. The next game is a game I actually just beat. I got it in September, played it right away, and that is Pac-Man World Repack. Uh, don't underestimate this game. It is a, it's quite challenging, actually. There were some moments, there's one specific level that I 
really wanted to throw my switch across the room uh, several times actually and I was like I am going to punch I'm gonna punch a hole in the wall because it was so mad but <laughs> it's doable it is really good and it was really satisfying being the final boss I got into it took a few tries and I was like all right I got this and then yeah it was really fun so uh, I recommend this for sure it's a remaster of the ps1 game and you know it's maybe not at the you know Mario or like Donkey Kong level in terms of like you know, those are like the high tier platformers, but it is really solid. So don't write this off. It's really good. Definitely check it out. The next game is one of my favorites on the Switch, and that is Paper Mario, the Origami King. I really, really actually like this. A lot of people did not, uh, they couldn't get into it, but I thought it was one of the most creative, unique battle systems that I've ever played, and I, I got into it. It was like I just, something clicked with me, and I really liked it. I thought the story was great. I love the worlds. I love the towns. I love the exploration. This was like perfect in every way to me. So, hey, you, <laughs> you can't win them all, but for me, this was a huge win. Next, we have Persona 5 Strikers, and I still haven't beat this. Um, I still haven't played it. Uh, I bought it because I was like coming off of a high of Persona 5 Royal, so then I had to get this, but I just, I didn't feel like playing in more. I wanted a break from it, so maybe next year I'll make it a priority to play because it definitely is one I want to because I love these characters, I love everything about them, and to spend more time with them sounds great, so I'll probably play this soon. Next we have a Pokemon, uh, like remaster a port it is pokemon brilliant diamond and i have to say i always play pokemon games and i always get mad like oh my god pokemon and i still play them <laughs> so it's my own problem but this one didn't do that for me this one i actually really liked I, I played diamond a long time ago and it was a whatever experience but this was like the experience i wanted i liked the graphics i liked that they kept them chibi and similar to the way they used to look you know back in the day that they didn't make it look like the new ones. So I was actually really thrilled with this and it was a lot of fun. So, you know, kudos, cause I always complain about Pokemon games, but this one was not, I, I it was not one I complained about. I really truly loved my experience with it. Next we have Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. And I absolutely love this game, even though I was not looking forward to it when it came out. I thought it was a dumbed down version of Blue and Red. And while that is true, it is still really, really, really fun. So don't write it off. It actually is a total blast. Next we have Pokemon Shield, which I hated. Um, this is my least favorite entry in the Pokemon series, actually. It is, it is just not, it is just not what I wanted from Pokemon at all. It, it handheld in a way, like I like, I don't mind handholding in games actually, but this was so frustrating. My only thing I can say about it is that it would basically point out cool things and be like, it was literally Dennis Nedry going, uh, 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 from Jurassic Park and being like, no, you don't get to do that. Oh, there's a cool thing going on in that cave. Nah, you just keep doing your badges. Keep you just keep being you. And I wanted to be like, you know what? F off. Okay. I'd like to go to that cool cave and do whatever's in there and go to the creepy factory and solve the problem. Okay. Why? Why do I not get to? So no, this game gets a huge thumbs down from me. We've got Ring Fit Adventure, which is actually really solid. And I feel like ever since I picked up running, I should give this a shot again because I feel like I'm more in shape and a bit more like willing to check it out. So I should give it another try now that I'm uh, more exercise loving. I don't know. <laughs> We've got Sayonara Wild Hearts. Uh, this game is like two hours long, so this is not a commitment. So you may not want a physical copy because it is a, you know, not a lot of money, but when you think about what you're getting, it's kind of like, eh. Um, I liked it and I wasn't like, um, blown away. Like some people it's like top tier for them. It wasn't for me, and I don't know if that's because people just told me it was so good, and then I went in being like, eh, it wasn't as good as I thought. I don't know. Is it great? Yes, it's very different. It is definitely a unique experience. I'll give it that. Next, we have Shantae and the Seven Sirens. I really like this, but I don't love it because it is too Metroidvania for me, which sucks because I really... I. I think I went into it thinking it was going to be more like your typical level-by-level -level platformer. It is not like that. And that's my own fault for not knowing enough about Shantae, but I did beat it. Um, this was one I played, I think I beat this like in the summer and it is, it's good, but 
it's just not for me. I think other people would have got way more out of this than me. We have Snipper Clips Plus. I haven't touched this for like three years, but it is really cool. I should probably check it out again when, you know, I'm just looking for something to do for like 10 minutes, but um, it is actually really cool. This is a cool game. It's just, I haven't, I haven't played it for a long time. We have a collection here, it's a pack. It has Sonic Mania and Team Sonic Racing in it. Now, I will say, I actually did try this this year. I was like, oh, you know what? I'm not a Sonic person, I'm gonna check out Sonic. And I played Sonic Mania and I'm so sorry guys, I didn't like it, I don't like Sonic. I tried so hard, it has such a weird feel. I am not connecting with it in any way. It just feels weird. It, I want it to feel like everything else, like other platformers do and it, it just feels weird to me. Um, but I am willing to give Team Sonic Racing a chance, though. I haven't actually played that one yet. But Sonic Mania, unfortunately, is not for me. We've got Super Mario Odyssey, a game that I actually, I don't think, truly finished. It came out, I played it almost to the end, and then put it down. And I was so hyped for this, you have no idea. If I had a list of top 10 games I've been, you know, had the most hype for, this one right here and it didn't deliver in the way I wanted it to and I think that's because I am just not a 10 year old child so nothing will ever deliver like what it did in Christmas 1997 so I need to just lower expectations because I'm not you know in grade four anymore so that's fine um so I want to give this another shot but I've heard it's really iffy to play handheld so I'll have to just sit down and play it on the TV at some point, but uh, it's just not been a priority, but maybe I can make it a priority next year. I don't know. We have Super Mario Party, another great Mario Party game, just like the other one. Uh, both good to own, great to play with friends. We have Super Mario 3D All-Stars, and I had to pick this up because it was like a limited thing. It was like, they're all like, if you don't pick it up now, you're never gonna find it, but you can totally find this still, so. Whatever, anyway, um, I guess they don't make it anymore, so I had to pick it up, but I will say, Super Mario 64, fantastic. I'd like to truly beat it one day. Super Mario Sunshine, I did not own, I, I didn't own a GameCube, so I've actually never played it, so I would like to check it out. And Super Mario Galaxy, I do own, just never beat it, because it was during that time of my life when I was just playing games and not beating anything, so I do actually wanna, you know, dive into that. So maybe when I'm looking for a good platformer to play, I will play one of these. We've got Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. Uh, wonderful collection. I loved this in every way. Bowser's Fury was also fantastic. I hope that they got, you know, the right feedback from people because I, it'd be nice to get a true full game done in this style because it was really good. So here's hoping because this is fantastic. Great platforming. This is like, this is top tier. This is like what I want from Nintendo, what I want from a Mario game. Here's a game I tried this year and unfortunately have shelved because it got just so like, I don't want to say grindy, but it was boring and kind of hard. And I was like, you know what? Nah, just no time in my life for that shit. So Tokyo Mirage Sessions, um, uh, FE Encore, Sharp FE Encore or whatever. It didn't do for me, didn't do for me. It was pretty boring actually, very like, uh, blah story so don't play this for the story i know people told me that but they really weren't joking and um this is just not that great i'm sorry it's not that great for me i know some people like it more but i did not like it that much we have trials of mana um this is really fun it's really great to me it's like a seven out of ten game where it's like it's 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 really good but it's just not the best so it could have been better, but it definitely gives you really fun kind of PS2 nostalgia vibes. So, uh, you know, it's worth it just for that alone. But yeah, um, solid game, solid game, just not my favorite. We have Triangle Strategy, one of my favorite Switch games ever. It is so good. This is so awesome and not like Octopath Traveler. It is great story, great cliffhangers. Um, everything about it is wonderful. It's um, accessible, there are difficulty settings. Definitely give this a shot if you didn't like Octopath Traveler. I promise it is not like that at all. We have Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, obviously one of the best games on the Switch, one of my favorite games. I absolutely love it. This is top tier. Uh, it's just phenomenal. So, again, like Triangle Strategy, so many cliffhangers, so many moments of like, no way! Like, it was just so great. <laughs> then we have Xenoblade Chronicles 2, of course, uh, which I recently just beat and absolutely loved. And I think I like it a little bit more than the second one because the characters I just fell in love with more. I just liked the story a little bit more. Um, but yeah, this is like phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. It was 
it's so great. I'm so glad that I decided to give it a go. So because I liked Xenoblade Chronicles 2 so much, I had to pick up Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna um, because, uh, you know, I, it's shorter. I love, 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 you know, the second one so much. So, you know, I'm very excited to play this. Uh, hopefully next year I'll give it a go because I'm really wanting to get to the next game that I'm about to show you, which is Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which I picked up because I just had to. Um, I actually bought it with Torna because I was like, oh, I'll just do a, like a pre-order and I'll get Torna at the same time. So yeah, I just played two so I could chill for a sec and I'll play this probably next year. But man, these are great games. So, you know, I probably should get on that. Next we have Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. I thought I was gonna get to this sooner, but I still haven't gotten to it. So uh, hopefully soon, <laughs> um, because I really like platformers a lot. And this one, you know, just looks so much like Donkey Kong Country and you guys know how much I love that. So hopefully soon, I will try and make it a priority. It was on my list to play this year and I didn't get to it yet, but we're only in November. And lastly, this is my last one, Yoshi's Crafted World. Solid, great platformer, just a little slow for me. Uh, but in terms of creativity and just like, I don't know, like the aesthetic, fantastic. Definitely worth checking out. You should definitely play it. If you don't like slow platformers though, you probably will hate it. But if you are okay with slower platformers that aren't quite as fast paced, uh, this is basically the opposite of Sonic. So yeah, definitely check it out though. Like it, it is worth it. I really do like it, but it's it wouldn't be a favorite for me. So yeah, that's my Switch collection. I'm really proud of it. It's really good. And I'm proud that I have played and beat so many of them. That feels really great. But we could do a pile of shame video, I'm sure, where I can just show you the games I'm planning on playing in the backlog that I want to get to, that I just haven't quite gotten to yet. But so far, I think not so bad. I think not so bad. I think I'm doing okay. So that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the next one.